God is a good God. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's a beautiful thing to just walk in the grace of God and to see how a God works in our life. Because when He comes and, you know, the more I, I walk with Him, the more I see uh, how uh, uh, in need I am of Him. Because God is working in the, uh, such a way in our life, uh, very differently, individually, to, to make Him just like Him, you know. Uh, uh, so I just thank God for even for the past few weeks, the, the one thing that God is uh, uh, teaching me and doing a work in my own life first. Uh, so I want to share this this morning to all of you because I think it is so important. Uh, everything is important in God. Amen. Amen. Everything is important as we grow, as we learn, as we walk with God, we learn new things. Actually, nothing new in, under heaven, you know. God's really said through the word, but it is a new experience that God allow us to, to, to see and to taste of the goodness of God. Amen. Uh, God is not finished with us yet. Amen. I say God is not finished with us yet. There's an old song. Uh, I, I, I'm not very sure the whole song, but there's a few words of the song says, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. We are not done yet. You know, so uh, be patient with one another. Got, God is still working in us to make, me, to make us to be just like Him. Amen. Amen. Uh, just like as, as we, if you realize, those of you are married, that after many years of getting married, you will discover that both of you look alike. Yeah? Uh, uh, that is what the beautiful thing is that when we walk with Jesus, we become like Him. Amen. We become just like Him in every area of our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you all happy this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the word of God in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. I'll read that again, huh? verse 1 and 2. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. I believe it is God's desire for us to uh, focus our thoughts and our, our actions, therefore our minds on eternal principles where values are not worldly. You know, I read a scripture in, in, in 2 Corinthians. The Word of God says that, uh, Paul was telling us that, you know, if, if, if we fix our eyes only on Jesus, our life is in vain. I was wondering why. You know, I, I, I like the way they put it in a Malay word. Way, yeah? Jikalau kita menetapkan mata kita pada Yesus, malanglah hidup kita. You know, the, the word malang is very, very deep, you know. He says, ruin is your life. You know, why? Because Paul wants us to look in a bigger picture. Not only on Christ, but the kingdom that is going to come. We must fix our life. You know, those days in the songs, a lot of our hymns, they talk about heaven. Talks about where we're going to go one day. Amen? And sometimes we need to not focus our life on this world, but on the things to come. One day we are going back home. You know, uh, I remember when we, was, we were, uh, 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 my daughter was, was small, about a few years old. I used to tell her, you know, one day we're going to die. <laughs> I said, we're all going to go back to heaven. She said, no, 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 I, I, I want to stay in Kiningau. I want to stay in Sabah. You know, but, but she, because she don't understand that this is not our home. Heaven is our home. When the word of God tells us to set things above. What it's trying to say, you know, God is so good. He has put some natural lines in the world today to keep us safe because He loves us. We are loved by God. And God put those lines to safeguard us that we will not cross those lines. We see in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4, He put a line where He separates between light and darkness. In verse 7, he separates the water under the expanse and from the water above it. In verse 9, Genesis 1, he separates what can be eaten and what cannot be eaten. 
just last two weeks ago, I, I was walking, uh, I was busy doing my work in the office. Uh, where's she? Um, she's not here. She called me, I said, I said, why? She said she saw something outside the office. I said, why? What's wrong? She saw a lizard running around. <laughs> and I was so happy. <laughs> so I knew that God has put that line that these things can be eaten. I was so glad. In verse 14, God divide, separate the line between day and night. Yeah? In, verse, in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 3, God said to the people of Israel, there are things that you used to do in Egypt. When I'm going to bring you into Canaan, you cannot do those things anymore. God has put lines in our life. And as we read the word of God, God will speak and show us those invisible lines that God has put within our life to safeguard us, to keep us from danger, and to help us to live our life so that we can enjoy the goodness of God. Amen? Yeah? The second line that God put that is that in a, what I call a tree line. Yeah? There are some places in, in nature that, uh, for example, you don't see a papaya, a, a, a banana tree growing up in Mount Kinabalu. Do you? No, you don't see. So it just cannot grow there. Yeah? The certain trees can grow at a certain uh, level of height, but not all trees can grow. You know why? Because of the lack of pressure, because of the climate change, uh, weather is too cold, it doesn't grow there. You know? There's also what I call a frost line, where you realize that God has created the nature, the, 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 the animals, where when, when winter comes, they go and find or they borrow someone else's house to go and keep them themselves warm in that, in that area, you know. But it is also a line where I see that is called the snake line. What do I mean by that? Yeah, there are certain heights of every mountain where snakes just cannot go, cannot stay and live there. It is a dividing line that you will be able to live safely and comfortably and not be afraid. For all those snakes, you know, uh, but thank God this does not apply in Sabah and Sarawak. Yeah. Because uh, uh, normally the, the snakes are afraid of humans uh, instead the otherwise in West Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, there is a line where uh, the snakes doesn't go up a certain height of a mountain, you know, and that is where the safe place that we can live. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, the word of God tells us the devil is also called the serpent. Yeah? We, we, we want to limit, today we want to learn how can we limit the excess of uh, the devil in our life so that we can able to live and follow God's prescription uh, in, in our life uh, through living, through repentance, forgiveness, obedience and love and not to be conformed to the things of this world, but transform to the renewing of our mind. And we want to learn this morning, how can we live in, this, in these areas of our Christian life? First of all, I want to talk to you about how, what happens when we live below the line. No? Uh, what happens when we live below the line, below the, the, the snake line? No, we, we, when we live below the snake line, we can be subject to the uh, molestation of the devil in our life. We, we, we see there is a moral depletion. We see there is a spiritual poverty. When we are born, we are born into the low land of sin. We suffer consequence. We suffer insecurity. Uh, we suffer shattered dreams, broken hearts, ruined relationship. It is a place where the, the, the snakes is very at work uh, in trying to inject poisons into our mind and into our lives. Yeah? At the end of the road is death. In this line, below this line, we see people in the Bible where God has put, for example, a Samson. God has put a line in his life. He said, uh, because Samson was living up in high in the mountains. Uh, every day, he will look down. You know, because his girlfriend was there. And his father and mother told him, you cannot marry them. You, you, you should marry our own people those who fear God, those who know God, and you cannot marry uh, 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 that girl over down there because that girl is not saved, you know? That girl is not saved. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, even now, in, in Christian church, I, I've seen even uh, boys and girls, they have girlfriends and boyfriends who are not saved, who's not a Christian. And they say, well, I'll, 
I'll just marry them anyway, just hoping that God can change them because they're in love. Uh, one day when I was in church worshipping, I, I kept on looking at my backup singer. Uh, uh, not because she was pretty, no. Uh, but I just kept on looking at her. I was wondering why, why. Uh, and one day I, I talked to her after service. I, I brought her back to, to, to talk to her. And I say, hey, how are you? Fine, thank you. I say, oh, do you pray? Yeah, I pray. You read your Bible? Yeah, I read my Bible. Are you living in sin? No. I said, do you have a boyfriend? Yeah. She looked down. And I asked her, is your boyfriend safe? No. Who is he? It's an Indian guy. Yeah, it doesn't matter whatever race he is. So I said, no wonder worship is something wrong. God has put that line. I asked her, don't you have anyone in the church that you like? There's so many single brothers and sisters here. Why look outside? Day after day, the parents would advise Samson, don't choose among us. Oh, no. When he saw down there, my, 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 Delilah. <laughs> he crossed that line that day. He lost his two eyes. Jonah, God has put the line. God told him to go to Nineveh. Don't cross that line. Where did he go? He went to Tarshish. And what happened? God prepared a big fish for him. God said, don't cross that line. Why are you making your life so miserable, so difficult? Don't cross that line. He crossed. And, but God is so good. In our weaknesses, in our stubbornness, he brings us back. Another person, David. God said, don't cross that line. Don't count your people. He did. Don't look down. He looked down. Don't kill that man. He took that lady's husband. Another man, the story of the prodigal son, we all know. We're very familiar with. The Bible says that this family is a very rich family and they live in the highlands of Judea. Every day they will look out. He, this guy will look out. What's down there? I'm sure he will say to the father, I, I think it's time to leave. I'm going to go and explore down over the other side. Day after day. And the father says, son, why? In my house, there is everything. What else do you need? You have everything you need. Why? No, I want to go down there. There's something. He saw the greenery, the beauty of the, those towns outside there. But the father said, don't, don't cross that line. And he did that day. And the Bible tells us that when he crossed that line, he ended up in poverty. My friend, there's nothing the world can give you, can offer to you. There's nothing there. Don't cross that line. In my father's house, there is everything. Stay in your father's house. Living in the lowland is very difficult. We are not made to live in the lowlands. You know, I went back home to, uh, when, when I got married in the Philippines, I went back to my wife's house. She, <laughs> she lived high up in the mountains. Uh, she lives in Baguio, up in the mountain. Yeah? You take a bus for seven hours from Manila to Baguio, another half an hour by Jeepney. When you reach down there, I had to walk up 360 stairs up, up in the mountain. I'm a lowlander. I'm not a highlander. There's no bus stops in between, brother. <laughs> I had to walk and carry all those things, my backpack up. I had to stop nearly 10 times 
and I was breathless. And my leg was knocking, my knee was knocking with each other. Just cannot. Because I'm not made for the highlands. I'm made for the lowlands. When I reached up, I didn't want to come down. I think twice. Because it was not easy. Because I'm not made for the highlands, I'm made for the lowlands. It was so high up, it's not like a normal staircase like this. It was made of stone, you have to climb up, you know. But after reaching there, I feel so grateful to God. Hallelujah. You know? And that's the beauty of it. Because we are born into this world, into the lowlands. That's why we are struggling in a Christian life. That is why we have so much of troubles in a Christian life. That is why when we got saved, when we become born again, hallelujah, the word of God tells us that we have been raised with Christ. A few amen. The Bible says we have been raised with Christ and seated with Christ. We're seated with Christ. Say seated with Christ. Come on, seated with Christ. When we are born again, we have been uh, transferred to the kingdom of God. I like the way how the Malay Bible tells us. We have been, the Bible, you know, English Bible says we have been transferred. But the Malay Bible says, Kita sudah dipindah. Say pindah. That's the problem. A lot of Christians don't want to pinda. They want to stay in their old house. Even if they're pinda, they pinda one leg on the old house, one leg on the new house. Amen? They don't want to pinda everything. Only some things. But when we become a Christian, when we get born again, He transferred us into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When, when we become a born again Christian, we have, been, we have been granted access to the things of God. When we are born again, we have been forgiven. When we are born again, we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. When we are born again, we inherit the things of God. Hallelujah. We, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessing. Amen. I'm so grateful for the word of God. You know, if you don't accept Christ, I don't know what to say. You know, coming from a poor family, when God offered, when I came across that verse, when God offered the abundant life, who don't want? Let me give you an example. When I went to Cebu, one of the visits, I went to the church in Kampong Suramban, and I asked them, any water in the tank? They got two big tanks. Any water? Only two buckets. I said, goodness, how to bathe? I don't mind bathing in the river, it's okay, no problem. You know, but there's a lot of crocodiles there. <laughs> I don't want to become their food. I want them to become my food. I, <laughs> I only have two buckets. I said, God, how to bathe? How to drink? I said, God, please, God, can you give me, give me some water today? You know, God is so wonderful, I tell you. When you ask for a cup of water, you know what he give? He give you a river. <laughs> that day, rain, whole day, whole night. I just asked for a cup. He gave. <laughs> that is how good he is. When he gives, he gives wonder. Say mayo. You know what mayo means? So much. That is how much he gives. So much. When we become born again, he raises us up and be seated up in the high place. That is where we need to be. Because in the high place, that's where we receive abundant life. That is where we receive abundant blessing. That is where we receive strength. That is where we are being renewed in God. That is where we see the goodness of God. Hallelujah. The eagle knows about this. You know the eagle? She doesn't leave. 
This eagle doesn't live on the lowland. He lives high up there. Because he knows. The eagle knows when it's down, he only comes and takes his prey and he goes up. But he doesn't stay there because the eagle knows the perils or difficulties that he will have to suffer. If no trouble, why look for trouble? Huh? Why create and look for trouble? So the eagle just stay high up there because he knows down there there's a lot of troubles. There's a story of an eagle. One day a farmer found some eggs of a fallen tree. Of the eagle's egg and the mother has died. So he took the egg and brought it to his, his hand to breed that egg. And one day the egg broke and the eagle, the baby eagle was there. It's about to grow. And while growing up, the eagle saw how the, his mother looked for food. The eagle eat just like the, his mother, the hen, used his back and scratched with his feet to look for food. And every day he would look up, try to flap his wings. And he said, I am a, a hen. And one day, he saw an eagle flying by, came to him and looked at him and he flew away. Something on the inside began to burn. Suddenly, say suddenly. Say that suddenly one more time. Suddenly he realized, I'm not a chicken. I am an eagle. And the farmer saw the eyes of that eagle. He could not fly off because he was in a cage. And the farmer opened the door and flew away. Suddenly, it knew. It came to a realization that I am an eagle. I am an eagle. You know, many Christians are living like a chicken. You are not born for the lowlands. We are born to fly. We are born to fly. Oh, for the past few days, I've been looking and looking What's wrong? I'm not made like this. There is something on the inside that God wants to stir our life this morning. Hallelujah. There is an eagle in everyone's life. People of God. The only way to overcome the devil is on the high land, not on the low land. I was struggling with certain things in my life for the past many, many years. And just for the few weeks that I, you know, if you want to know the truth, we have to do it. That's what Jesus says, those who hear, to do it. Only when you do it, then you know it is true. If you don't do, you don't know it is truth. It could be any errors of our life. So when I allow this word to begin to dwell in my mind, all those things that seems I was struggling just drop off. Just as we sang last night, how great is our God. Don't tell God how big your problem you go and tell the problem how big God is. Because we were not made for the lowlands, we were made for the highlands. So the only way to overcome the devil is to get into the highlands where Jesus is. And don't come down. Stay up right there. That's how we overcome. Let me illustrate this one story. 
some years ago, there was, in World War II, there was a pilot who took off from one of his base and flew out. While flying on the mid-air, he heard a scratching sound near the uh, full slush tank. And he off his engine and he, he, he heard not only scratching, but sound of something biting. And he was afraid that he might crash. And he realized there's a, there's a mouse in the engine. Do you know what he did? He got control of the stick and flew upwards. He went high, high enough at a certain altitude. And suddenly, there was no noise. When he came down, landed, he checked his, his plane and he found a dead rat. Now, how did he overcome that problem? He went up high. You see, living in the high lands, we want to limit the devil's excess. We want to stop from all those troubles from the enemy is to go up where Christ is and stay. You see, the devil cannot be at every place at one time. Only God can. The reason why, one of the reasons that I find myself struggling in those areas is that I'm living in the low land. But God wants us to go up higher. Say higher. Say higher. He wants us to go up higher because on that high land, we can able to see. We can able to identify. We can able to overcome all those struggles that we are on the low land. When live in the highlands. Why? Because God wants us to see few things. He wants us to see that we are not of this world. That God is calling us to a higher kingdom. God is calling us to a higher civilization that God wants to raise. Because in these last days, He wants to raise a new breed of people. A new kind of people that will be different, that will stay, that will rise above their, their abilities, that will rise above of their weaknesses, that will rise above. No, you, you may say, well, I, I had a, such a bad life. It's okay. It's okay. Because the Word of God says, I will repay you back. It's not that you have failed. We, we have failed in some ways in our life. But God is okay. I want to raise you up again in these last days. Because of those things in our life that God wants to inject grace in our life want to inject mercy in our life that we will rise up once again in these last days to become instruments of God, to live on those high lands of God because in this high land, we can overcome the enemy. Hallelujah. Because on the high land, we can overcome all the difficulties that we've been going through all those years in our Christian life. Only in the high land. Because why? First of all, my friends, God has raised us up into a new level. Hallelujah. We have been empowered to live above the snake line. How do we do it? Two things, my friend. By knowing and obeying and doing the will of God. That is the truth in our life. Secondly, by yielding to God. That is what God is asking us this morning. Amen. Amen. So living above the snake line. Because why? Because God has empowered us to live in that way. The way to defeat sin is by altitude. The way to defeat sin is to be where Christ is in our Christian life. Amen? And my challenge this morning is this. Even as the Word of God said, set your things on the things, set your mind on things above. Only when we know the principles, the, 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 the principles of the kingdom of God then we're able to live victoriously for God. Amen? It's not about struggling. It's about living on the high altitudes where Christ is. Then we will no longer, I'm not saying the devil will not come, but we will limit his excess in our Christian life. Amen? Shall we pray?
there may be some of you who are struggling. You need to know the truth. You need to receive the truth and start believing. Our Christian life is actually it's not difficult, but trusting God. He has done everything. God's word tells us that in 2 Peter 1, 3, that His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who have called us by His own glory and goodness. You don't have to live in defeat. Life is a choice. You can choose to live on the lowlands and suffer all the consequences or you can choose to be where Christ is and see victory after victory. On that high land, the devil cannot touch you. You need to know who you are in Christ and what Christ has done already for you. I feel so free knowing what God has done. So free to know and I can be at rest that God will provide for every single thing. I don't have to be anxious. I can be at peace. That is why the song says, I rest. I rest in your love. Perfect love casts out all fear because it gives such an assurance and confidence in, in our hearts that God is more than able to help. Will you believe his promise? God has a good proven record. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. There is none like him. If you will come and be honest and come before him, he will do it. Let him do it for you. To some, let him help you. To some, let him carry you through. And to some, stand still and Stand still and see the salvation of God. It's not that we don't trust. We, we do trust, but sometimes the problem is that we don't persevere in our trust. We are so impatient in the things of God. But God has want us to wait and to be still, to know that He is God. If you allow Him and let Him do it, He will do. Just simply trust Him and believe. God is so real and so wonderful. That is what God wants to do in our life. Take time to meditate on the word of God and just think through. Let allow God to give you the peace and assurance to know that you are loved by God. To know and for sure that God is our sufficiency and God is our confidence. To know that God is so real. Only in that stillness of heart Nothing can shake you. Nothing can move you. But to be still in the presence of God. All I'm asking my, my beloved, listen what God wants to speak to you.
That is the key. Listen what God is speaking to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Even as we just be at rest in God's presence, I want to sing that song, I rest. I rest. We are so tired and so throughout this whole week. Just meditate on these words and as we make this as a prayer. God wants from the beginning of the service till now. God is telling, be at rest. Come up to me. Come a little bit higher to where I am. And you are saved in the shadows of the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You know, when you lose everything, Christ becomes precious to you. And sometimes that's what God does. He strips away all our strength. He strips away all that we depend on so that Christ can become our all in all. Let God be your everything. How true the word is. When we try to save, we will lose. When we lose for His name's sake, we get everything that we need and it becomes precious. That one thing keeps coming back again and again. How precious is Jesus to you? How precious is Jesus to you? God is telling, I have loved you with an everlasting love. From the day that I brought you, I have not failed to keep and sustain you. Will I not be faithful to watch over? Will not I be faithful to keep and provide all that you need as a loving father? Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For I will help you. I will carry you through. Trust me. Trust in my righteous right arms. That is more than able if I can carry the weight of the world, I can carry you through. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for having such a loving God and such a wonderful God. Our heart just stand amazed, stand in awe of, of your mercy, of your grace that have brought us here and kept us here. We thank you for the truth that we can know, the truth that we can rely on, the truth that we can live on. To be overcomers and to be more than conquerors through your word. And we thank you that in this last day that you're going to raise this church, you're going to raise each and every one of us to be a man and woman of prayer, to be a man and woman who know how to take forth the word, and to know man and woman who, who will know how to live above the snake line. And we thank you. We thank you for you have already overcome, and we can overcome too, Lord. Hallelujah.
We thank you, Father. We praise you and we give you all the glory and honor for keeping, for you promise in your word that you are faithful to keep us till the day we meet you face to face. Hallelujah. You are faithful to keep us strong till the day we meet you face to face, Father. And we thank you that we are going to be people who are strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. People who will remain standing. People who will march on uh, against the gates of the enemy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we thank you that we will not stop it, God. And we're going to see you doing in our life, in and through this church. Hallelujah. Because God, we're not going to be the same anymore. This church will not be the same anymore. Hallelujah. For you're going to take us from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Oh, from strength to strength, God. We will rise up, Father God. We will grow up, God. Hallelujah. And we bless your holy name, God. We bless your name, oh Father. We give you all the glory and honor and we thank you for everything God in Jesus name we ask and we pray amen, amen and amen hallelujah